Hello, and welcome back to Maturing the Bride. We are on book four, dealing in the area of eternal security. We are asking the question, is it once saved, always saved, or can we lose our salvation? You've been finding out we are leaning toward once saved, always saved. We believe it's the heart of the scriptures. In fact, we discovered you don't even need to repent you need to acknowledge that you're a sinner and trust Christ to save you. If you do that, your sins are paid in full and you are completely free. But we found with that, that with freedom comes choices. And so we found out that God gives us multiple opportunities to choose. Commands are choices. And so in this chapter, we're asking a simple question. Chapter 7, can Christians abuse their freedom? Can Christians abuse their freedom? Now be very careful, because this can also be called backslidden Christians. Are backslidden Christians still believers? Or can Christians abuse their freedom? In other words, can we make bad choices? Well, we need to ask ourselves the question, are there examples of believers making bad choices in the Old Testament? And of course, the obvious answer is yes. Joseph was sold by his brothers. Not one of the best decisions. They get very ticked off at him. We read in Genesis 37, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. Not a good choice. They sold their brother off into slavery. Well, as we go on and look at the period of the judges, constantly we sing Israel as a nation making bad choices, choosing evil. God sends a prophet. He straightens them out for a while. The prophet dies, and we see them go back to evil. We see this repeated over and over and over again. Let's pick it up in Judges chapter 2, verse 11. And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. In other words, they chose to serve the Baals. Well, God sends a prophet Ehud, and then we read this. And the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud had died. And then God sends them Deborah. Deborah straightens them out, and then after she dies, the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hands of the Midian for seven years. Then he sends them Gideon. Same thing happens. He straightens them out after he dies. The people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals and the Ashtoreth, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the Ammonites and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. They forsook the Lord. Eventually they said, hey, we want a king. We want to be like all the other nations that are around us. And we read these words, 1 Samuel chapter 8. But when they said, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord and the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. They made a choice. They didn't want the God of Israel to leave them. They wanted to have their own king. It was a choice. Men and women were full of choices when we follow God. Well, how did the kings do? Well, King Saul was a bad king. The Lord told Samuel, Saul has stopped obeying me, and I'm sorry that I made him king. Saul started off good, but ended up bad. David had problems with Bathsheba. He sleeps with Bathsheba, and then he murders her husband. And then he goes off and marries her. 2 Samuel chapter 11. When the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she lamented over her husband. And when the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. David, the king who wrote the Psalms, he made bad decisions. He made bad decisions. So did his son Solomon. He also made bad choices. 1 Kings chapter 11. Now King Solomon loved many foreign women. And God said, I didn't want you to marry the women of those other nations. First Kings chapter 11. You shall not enter into marriage with them. 
neither shall they with you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. And then, to make it even worse, he builds temples to their gods. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Moloch, the abomination of the Ammonites, on the mountain east of Jerusalem. And he did so for all his foreign wives who made offerings and sacrifice to their gods. Solomon was making consistently bad choices. It was all through the Old Testament. But they didn't have the Holy Spirit indwelling in them as we do now. So what about the New Testament? Are there examples of Christians making poor choices in the New Testament? Well, Paul himself wrestled with making bad choices. We see this in his writings to the Romans. Romans chapter 7. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. The Apostle Paul wrestled with making bad choices or doing bad things. Okay, well, let's ask this question. Are there Christians in the New Testament who made bad choices who didn't feel bad about it? Well, the answer is yes. Ananias and Sapphira. They're in the New Testament, very early days. The church is beginning to grow. Everyone's selling their properties, given to the apostles. They were distributing it evenly among all the people who had need. But Ananias and Sapphira sold some property and kept the money to themselves. We read these words. But a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself a part of the proceeds of the land? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. He died. Wasn't a good choice. That doesn't mean he goes to hell. It was he died. He had a judgment on him on this earth that God judged Moses with. Moses died. He wasn't allowed to go into the promised land, but obviously Moses made it to heaven because he was at the transfiguration. So this does not necessarily mean that Ananias went to hell. He simply died. Again, if it's once saved, it's always saved. If Ananias was a believer, he's going to heaven, but he died because he lied to the Holy Spirit. Same with his wife, Sapphira. But Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. So, are there more examples? The answer is yes. It's all over in the New Testament. Did you know that Christians got drunk at church in the New Testament? You aware of that? It's right there. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 20 to 21. When you come together... It is not the Lord's Supper that you eat, for in eating, each of you goes ahead with his own meal. One goes hungry, another gets drunk. Christians were getting drunk at church. Yes, uh-huh, because they met in people's homes. They were getting drunk at church. Paul says this is not good. Christians have evil thoughts. James chapter 2. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and a fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Judges with evil thoughts? Yeah, Christians can have judgments with evil thoughts. Christians can have evil thoughts. I've seen it before lots of times. Did you know that Christians can have selfish ambitions? Philippians chapter 1. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition. People are trying to spread the gospel, telling other people about Christ, for their own selves. Oh, men and women, you and I both know pastors who are preaching for their own self-image, not for God's kingdom. This is what's happening. They're preaching out of selfish ambition. 
Did you know that we Christians can judge others? Oh, yeah, we all know that, right? Romans chapter 14. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? We are great. We Christians are great at judging one another. And he says you shouldn't do it. Don't judge others for the choices that they make. Christians can be greedy swindlers. Greedy swindlers? Yeah. That's what it says. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. But now I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother. In other words, these are definitely Christians. Who bears the name brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or swindler. Not even to eat with such a one. Christians can be greedy. They can be swindlers. They can be involved and guilty of sexual immorality. Yeah. Those people have really backslidden. But if it's one saved, I always say, these people are still believers, but they're making poor choices. That's why so many Christians are seen as hypocrites. Paul wrestled with this himself, even with his own team. Galatians chapter 2. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James... And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. Those on the early teams getting the gospel out, they had hypocrisy going on. They had hypocrisy. Paul knew about it, and he called them on it. Even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. Did you know that Christians can grumble against each other? I'm sure you've seen this one too. But yeah, it's in the text, James 5. Do not grumble against one another. Why would he write that unless they were grumbling? That's right. Christians grumble. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Did you know that Christians can divide people, groups, with quarreling? Yeah. Christians can be divisive. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there is no division among you. No division? There's divisions among Christians? Oh, yes, we all know that. Just look at all of our different denominations. But that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. Quarreling in the church? Have you ever heard of a church splitting up because of quarreling? I have. Yeah, Christians quarrel with one another inside the church. Did you know that some Christians meeting do more harm than good? They do more harm than good? Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17. But in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. Some of the meetings in the early church made things worse, not better. Why? They were making poor choices. They were believers who were making poor choices. We all have choices to make, and some of us make very poor choices. Some Christians are downright lazy, lazy. Second Thessalonians, don't you remember the rule we had when we live with you? If you don't work, you don't eat. And now we're getting reports that a bunch of lazy good-for-nothings are taking advantage of you. This must not be tolerated. We command them to get to work immediately. No excuses, no arguments and earn their own keep. There are some Christians who are just flat out lazy. They're lazy. Some Christians are suing other Christians. They sue one another. Paul had that problem. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I say this to shame you. Is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge a dispute between believers, but instead one brother takes another brother to court and this in front of unbelievers? In front of unbelievers? These are obviously Christians. One brother taking another brother to court. Christians sue each other. That's a bad choice. Christians can steal. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. Must steal no longer? That must mean they were stealing. Yeah, Christians can steal. But must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. 
God says, I don't want you to steal. I want the exact opposite. I want you to work so that you can be sharing with other people who have a need. But many Christians don't make that choice. They don't work hard to share. They work hard. Some are greedy to keep it all. Others just steal, making bad choices. Making bad choices. Some Christians can be foolish. Foolish. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is. Some Christians are foolish. Others are hard of hearing or dull of hearing. Christians can be dull of hearing. About this we have much to say, and it is hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. Dull of hearing. Sitting in church week after week, it goes in one ear and right out the other. They're dull of hearing. Some Christians cannot distinguish good from evil. They can't distinguish good from evil. Hebrews chapter 5. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. To distinguish good from evil? Yeah, but some Christians can't do that. Why? They've never been trained by constant practice of obeying God's word. Some Christians can have evil hearts. Christians? Evil hearts? It's what the text says. Hebrews chapter 3. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart. Christians can be evil? Yeah. Yeah. Why? They're, making, they're saved. They know they need a Savior. They're trusting Jesus. They're not repenting, and they're making bad choices. Some Christians can be slanderers. We all know that, right? But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith and love and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to too much wine. Why would he write the word not slanderers? Because some women were slanderers. And he says, no, that's not good. That's not good. In fact, Christians can bite and devour each other. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. That's exactly what we're talking about. They've got freedom but they're abusing that freedom. They're using the freedom in the wrong way. Do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. Men and women, you've been called to freedom, but some people abuse that freedom. In fact, some Christians are sleeping around. They're sleeping around. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that even the pagans do not tolerate. A man is sleeping with his father's wife. How disgusting. But yeah, it was happening. Well, are there examples of Christians who consistently make bad choices? Maybe these others weren't consistent. But are there examples of people who are consistently making bad choices? choices. Well, are they permanently backslidden? Well, maybe yes, maybe no, I don't know. But the Bible does speak about those who are Christians who are consistently making bad choices. Christians can persist in sin. First Timothy chapter 5. As for those who persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all so that the rest may stand in fear. Rebuke them. Does the Bible ever tell us to rebuke non-Christians? No, only Christians. Oh, these must be Christians. Christians who are persistent in sin. Yeah, there are some Christians who persist in sin. They keep doing it over and over and over again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Wake up from your drunken stupor as is right and do not go on sinning. Do not go on sinning. There are Christians who just go on sinning. Christians can hate each other, hate each other. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother 
is still in darkness. Oh, does that mean they're in hell? No. Darkness doesn't necessarily mean hell. Darkness means broken fellowship with God. They've got relationship, but broken fellowship, they're still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. There are Christians who hate their brothers. And some Christians look like non-Christians. Sometimes you can't tell the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. Paul writes to the Corinthians, when you are jealous of one another and divided up into quarreling groups, doesn't that prove that you are still babies wanting your own way? In fact, you are acting like people who don't belong to the Lord at all. You're acting like people who don't belong to the Lord at all. In fact, Christians can be worse than non-believers. Worse? That's what the Bible says. 1 Timothy chapter 5. But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Oh, he's not a believer, right? No. No, it's saying he's worse than a non-believer. Therefore, that means he is a believer. Some believers are worse than non Believers, why? They're making poor choices. They're making poor choices. God says, you've got the freedom to do whatever you want, but I encourage you to make good choices. I'll bless you. If you make poor choices, I'm going to punish you. You'll have a dysfunctional life. And this is what's happening. They're worse than non-believers. The text goes on to even tell us that there are Christians, once saved, always saved, who lose their faith. We've talked about this before. Who lose their faith. 1 Timothy 1, 18 and 19. This charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. This is a war. Staying in fellowship with God is a war, that you may wage the good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. By rejecting this, by rejecting what? What's the this? By rejecting the fact that it's a war and it's going to be a struggle. By rejecting that and choosing the easy way, the broad way, the wide way. By rejecting the small narrow door and choosing the wide way. By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith. Their faith has been shipwrecked. Oh, they're no longer Christians. No, that's not what it's saying. One saved always saved, but their faith is shot. Their faith has been broken down to nothing. They may even be denying God. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and the teaching of demons. They're departing from the faith and they're following bad teaching, teaching of demons. 1 Timothy 5. But refuse to enroll younger widows, for when their passions draw them away from Christ, they desire to marry and so incur condemnation for having abandoned their former faith. They've abandoned the faith. Some have shipwrecked, some have left, some have abandoned. So they're no longer Christians, right? No, 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 no. Once saved, always saved. Once saved, always saved. But the text seems to be indicating, it seems to be telling us that they've abandoned, they've shipwrecked their faith. So let's get back to the original question. Can Christians make bad choices in their freedom? Can Christians abuse their freedom? And the answer is absolutely yes. They can make bad choices. It was for freedom that Christ set you free do not use your freedom for the flesh. We've got the choice to do that. Paul says, don't do it. Don't do it. Let's review. We're telling you, once saved, always saved. With once saved, always saved, you are completely free. And with that freedom, we can choose poorly. We can choose poorly. In fact, there are some Christians who are liars and deceivers. 
They can be drunkards. They can have evil thoughts. They can have selfish ambitions. They can judge others. They can be greedy swindlers. They can be hypocrites. They can be grumblers. They can divide others with quarreling. Their meetings can do more harm than good. They can be lazy. They can be slanderers. They can devour each other. They can sleep around. They can persist in sin. They can be worse than a non-believer, and some even lose their faith. This does not mean they've lost their salvation. It does not mean they've lost their salvation. It does mean we will have lost fellowship with God and great rewards. We will have lost fellowship with God and great rewards. Men and women, so many people assume backslidden Christians are now no longer Christians. They've lost their faith. If you're once saved, always saved. That's not true. But the Bible does speak about backslidden Christians or Christians who have lost their faith or Christians who are just basically making bad choices. They're making poor choices. But they're still believers. They're still believers. They've got relationship with God. They just don't have fellowship with God. That fellowship has been broken. And this is why in our next chapter, we're going to see the Bible distinguishes and differentiates between being a child of God and a friend of God. The difference between being a child of God and a friend of God. You don't want to miss it. Thank you for watching Maturing the Bride.